the Lord regretted that he had made him the beings of the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I've committed, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Now to the other side of the Bible, we're going to read from Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, verses 1 through 7. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offering. By faith, Abel still speaks, even though he's dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life, so that he did not experience death. He could not be found, because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about the things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is keeping with faith. This is the word of the Lord. When we think about Noah, just like the kids' sermon, we think about the ark. Animals parading two by two, the flood, and the rainbow promise that the world would never be destroyed again by a flood. We remember the raven and the dove, and the dove who brings back the olive branch, that symbol of peace. As a father, I love telling that Bible story of the flood and how God saved the animals. And as a new grandfather, I'm waiting to tell that story again and again and again. But as we read, there's much more to Noah than being a boat builder. The world was thoroughly corrupt. And we read that the Lord regretted that he had made mankind. Only Noah, only Noah, was a righteous man who was chosen to save his family by means of the ark. Noah was listed as one of the heroes of faith, and scripture records a lot about what was going on in those times and what we can also infer. So let's dig deeper into the story by looking at Noah, a hero of faith, a preacher of righteousness, and a man who walked with God. Hebrews tells us of great examples of faithful people we have in the Old Testament. Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Rahab, Gideon, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, just to name a few. Those men and women lived by faith. They knew that God would redeem his people, but they didn't see it looking forward in time. We, on the other hand, have the scriptures, and we can read about what happened. Faith. Faith is the confidence of things hoped for, the assurance of what we do not see. It's a firm persuasion and an expectation that God will perform all that he has promised to do 
in Jesus Christ. It's the firm conviction in our souls that the revelation of Scripture given to us is true. And just like sight is to our bodies, faith is that sense for our souls. Faith and hope go together and help the believer. Faith is a gift. Imagine if there is no faith. How could anyone believe anything spiritual? You know, there's that saying, seems believing. And maybe that was one of the problems that happened in that ancient world. They didn't see, but they didn't believe in God. And then the society decayed. Those Old Testament heroes show us that faith is not something new, not something that started in the New Testament. No, faith has been planted in man's soul ever since that, our first parents in Adam and Eve. Those people who had faith back then, when the world began, were believers. And God took care to remake a record of those things, of what they did because of their faith, for our benefit. Our passage makes clear that one of the first articles of faith that God is that God created the world by His Word, out of nothing. And I think there's an important truth there, <clears throat> that faith in creation is not an enemy of science. Faith is a friend of science to help understand what we do and what we do not know about creation. In fact, I think a scientific person with faith may have a leg up on a non-believing peer as they have some insights into creation recorded in Scripture. But I'm digressing here because we're supposed to talk about Noah. Even as God recorded that He created the world, He also records that He destroyed it as well. And as sovereign God, that's in His right. He has the ability to create and to destroy. A second point about faith comes from the reference to Abel. We see that there was worship of God via sacrifices in those early times. It points that after the fall of mankind, God did not cut off dealing with mankind or write us off, though he could have. No, he was always there, sustaining and upholding his creation and observing mankind. With respect to Noah, the scriptures record that he was righteous. In verse 5, we read this. The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. There was contempt for God, and in the growth of wickedness, we also see the ruin of human society. And God sees it all. He knew their sins, not just the visible sins, but what was in their hearts. And it stands to reason that God sees sin in our hearts as well as the visible sins that we commit. Yet, yet Noah was a just man, fair, honest, and trustworthy. The person who walked in righteousness in a sinful world is pleasing to God, and He rewards those who seek Him. Is that the way we are known by our friends and peers? Above board, honest, trustworthy, fair? For 600 years, Noah was known as a righteous person. Scripture records that he was blameless. Noah was devout willing to swim upstream against the popular opinion of the day, devout and willing to do what the Lord asked him to do. You know, it's easy to be religious if being religious is in fashion, but it shows strong faith when it goes against the popular ideas of the day. Noah wasn't sinless because he was a human, but he was blameless. And to be blameless Noah and others of the Old Testament age had 
to be covered by Jesus Christ's atoning sacrifice, that infers that the saving work of Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection, goes back in time and forward in time from when he died and rose again. Christ died for all who are his, the ancients, the here and now, and for those not yet born. His atonement for us is not limited or bound by time. So another question for us. Before God, are we blameless? Are you covered by the blood of Jesus Christ? Noah was also believing and faithful. In the passage we read, by faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. He builds an ark in an arid land, which is foolishness to the world, but he built it in obedience to the command of God. Noah became the standard of obedience that God used at the time to judge the world. Noah was warned by God that he was going to put an end to all living things, animals, people, everything, by something not yet seen, a flood. By faith, he constructed that ark according to God's instructions. You know, nowadays, if he had consulted others, he might have been convinced to build, not to build it due to the expense or the time or the labor or other objections that wouldn't seem reasonable. And to build a structure back then, like building an ocean liner in a landlocked country, would just be Noah's folly. But respect for God caused him to build that ark, which caused mocking and ridicule from the wicked people all around him. In 2 Peter chapter 2, you can read that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He preached to the world the warnings of God that was going to happen, what was coming. And I'm sure he begged people to repent of their ways and save themselves from the coming destruction. But no one came. No one changed. No one in the whole world was righteous. He lived a life of righteousness that was different from everybody else. We read, he condemned the world by his faith. Finally, Noah walked with God. Only two people listed in the heroes of faith in Hebrews were listed as walking with God. Enoch and Noah. Enoch was listed in Genesis 5 as living 365 years and walked with God for 300 years and didn't die because God had taken him away. He was no more, as some other scripture versions say. Interestingly, Noah was Enoch's great-grandson. Enoch was the father of Methuselah. Methuselah was the father of Lamech, and Lamech was the son, was the father of Noah. Noah wasn't sinless. He was devout. He lived a life of communion with God to try and please him and conform himself to God's will. And God honors faithfulness by influencing our children and our grandchildren. As I mentioned, I'm now a grandfather and waiting for the chance to be able to tell my little one about the stories of God and Jesus Christ, just like my father did, and for us, his children. And this is both a responsibility and a privilege for parents and grandparents to train up our children in the ways of the Lord. So what message can we take away from the story of Noah and apply it to our lives today? Well, have things changed much from the days of Noah? There's still wickedness, and the inclination of our hearts are still evil. To me, it appears that God's being pushed out of our lives and our 
the fabric of our society is getting stretched pretty thin. And just as God has examined everyone back then, He still does that today. He sees all and He knows all. Men and women, boys and girls. He didn't spare anyone in the whole world except for the family of Noah back then. Why would He spare anyone today? We, we need an ark. We need something to save us, to take refuge in. And thankfully, we have something greater than a boat that was made with human hands. We have Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus Christ, who in obedience to God's will, died for us. And like Noah was, Jesus Christ is now the new standard by which the world will be judged. And as judge, as judge, God will certainly punish those who are sinful and wicked, just as he used the flood for punishment of those of that day. Because we cannot measure up on our own, we need a Savior. We need that ark. Friends, Jesus Christ is that means of salvation. Jesus Christ is that ark, so to speak. And if you call on the name of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. In Acts 4, we read this, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name by which we may be saved. Noah, Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Are we preaching the salvation found in Jesus Christ to others? Or are we simply letting people go to hell? And what about our own lives? Has it been a while that we confessed our sins and asked for forgiveness? God promised to Noah that he and his family would be preserved safely in the ark. But they had to enter it. And God shut the door of the ark. God said that he was sorry that he made man. But he never said that he was sorry to have redeemed us. He loved us too much, so much that his one and only son died for you and for me, that we might have fellowship with him. No sin is too great that it can't be forgiven, because our Savior is greater than all our sins combined. Believe that he exists. He knows you exist. And Jesus is waiting for you to enter that ark, to experience his grace of redemption. We never know when our lives are up, or when the Lord will return, so don't put it off. Earnestly seek him while he still can be found before the door is shut. Father in heaven, we thank you for the lessons we can learn from the Bible. By your Spirit, guide us how we can walk in your ways. Help us always be ready to share the hope we have in you. And thank you for the means of saving us from your wrath against sin by the power of your Son, Jesus Christ. In his strong and powerful name, amen.